my experiences of the abuse to which those bullies subjected me have always left me with aftereffects that I found difficult to describe, without risk of sounding over dramatic. My husband tried to understand what he took to be in allergies, but which I knew to have a literal truth. When I spoke to him of feeling violated, as though I had been raped, even though no one had laid a physical hand on me. For the brief time I remained with them, after they had bullied me to the point of non-existence. He thought it was my low self-esteem which led me to write an article about how I had prostituted myself during those final months. I knew it had nothing to do with self-esteem and everything to do with letting the abusers have me in return for paying my mortgage. I even sounded a little over-dramatic to myself at times, I have to admit. I mean, violation, rape, prostitution. Very emotive and value-laden words to use for a mere case of bullying and psychological battering. However, they say, don't they, that no idea is unique. And today I came from someone who has put my way of expressing these matters into a book. And since I didn't give them to her, I'm assuming it was not just some creative method I used to ensure that my husband understood the depth of the pain I was suffering. But that what I described as happening to me actually did. As a healer, I work with energies and a chakra system, energy points in the body which relate to our physical, mental, emotional and spiritual health, or conversely, dis-ease. As I read this particular chapter in Anatomy of the Spirit by Caroline Miss, she explained that in regard to our second sacral chakra, which governs relationships, and the need to exercise an element of control over our physical environment, sexual violations such as rape, abuse, etc., are more than just physical attacks. They are energy attacks as well. What hit a chord with me, however, was when she went on to explain that someone could commit rape, which therefore means someone else is on the receiving end without the physical act. Rape, after all, is all about power and control. Through verbal and psychological abuse and disempowerment, one's energy field can thus be raped. This brought me a confirmation of something I had long known but found difficult to word eloquently. Yet further confirmation was offered two pages on when the author explained prostitution in much the same way and stated that energy prostitution, the selling of part of oneself for material exchange, is more common than physical prostitution. These revelations won't mean that those who committed the rape or paid for my services will be brought to justice for it. Well, not in the physical world anyway. However, to commit such acts and tamper with someone's energy in this way is toxic not only to those on the receiving end, but to those who dish it out as well. What brings me the most comfort, however, is the fact that something I knew within myself to be true is now available for people in the world at large to read and therefore gives them the opportunity to protect themselves and that for those who fear they may not be believed, if they try to describe such events to others, there is hope that in the future, society will be able to accept that a rape of the soul is indeed possible. <laughs>